My boss works so hard. She's the type to stay at least two hours after closing and come in on weekends. She's very inspirational, but I'm nothing like her. Am I lazy? It's time to do some research. Grab your journal and take notes with me. Taking a day off. Okay, so my boss would never take a mental health day. She literally works on vacations. Does it make me lazy that sometimes I feel like I need a break? According to Dr. Timothy J. Legg, knowing when to take a mental health day for yourself is crucial to maintaining your overall health and well-being, both in and outside the workplace. It can be very easy to feel that poor mental health isn't a good reason to take time for yourself, especially when most of society sees a sick day as something only reserved for a cold or flu. However, our mental health is equally as important to our overall well-being as our physical health. Dr. Light continues by saying, we aren't talking about the usual Sunday scaries or just feeling bored or not excited to go into the office. If you wake up and feel especially stressed, down or anxious at a level that impairs your functioning, it's time to consider taking the day off. Going to bed late. My boss gets up every single morning at 5 a.m. I wish I could be like that, but I feel like I work better at night. Is it lazy if I don't wake up early and start getting things accomplished? According to sleep specialist, Rafael Paleo, Many people have genetic tendencies towards being a morning person or a night owl, but these tendencies do not determine a person's sleep patterns. Being a night owl does not equate to being lazy. In fact, it's genetic and our preferences are a chronotype and doesn't have anything to do with your work ethic. Unfortunately, if need be, your body is capable of making some adjustments. The important thing is to ensure that whatever schedule you're on makes it possible to get enough sleep to stay healthy. Not getting enough sleep would negatively affect anyone, regardless of being a night owl or an early bird. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that thumbs up, and let's embark on an incredible journey of mental health and psychology. Avoiding the gym. I've had multiple gym memberships, but I never seem to make it a constant habit. To be honest, I don't really like going. It's not that I don't wanna exercise, it's just that walking on a treadmill or lifting weights makes me feel pretty miserable. My boss is all about the fit life. She starts each day with a two mile run on a treadmill at the gym near her apartment, even on weekends. I've been trying hard to imitate her. I know it's important to her that we stay on top of our game, but what if it's just not my style? Certified personal trainer Paige Weiner says, when it comes to exercising, it's important to find your own path. You don't have to join a gym to be healthy. There are so many options. In fact, it's a chance to get creative. And what about trying a dance class or playing a game of tennis with a friend? You can also go on a hike or try mountain biking. Exercise doesn't have to be boring or monotonous. Paige says, find what you like and forget the rules. Spending the day in bed. Speaking of weekends, my bosses are jam-packed. She really is a superwoman. Cars washed, groceries bought, and house tidied all while having time to hang out with her friends. She does it all. And I frequently have days where I stay in bed all day in my PJs, literally accomplishing nothing not a dish washed or a piece of laundry sorted, pure survival mode. LPC Daniel Young says that right now, many people are living in survival brain more than normal. She explains that this can be brought on by things such as changes to routines, disconnection from friends and family, loss of loved ones, emotions from civil unrest, experiences with racism, bullying, and even financial insecurity. She also encourages you to be gentle and kind to yourself. This isn't failing or not being good enough. This is having a physiological experience to stress. It's normal and it's temporary. When I have days like that, it isn't that I just don't want to do anything. It's that things feel too hard to do it. It happens when I'm struggling. Getting out of bed is a huge achievement on days like that. But if I don't, it isn't the end of the world. I can try again tomorrow. Surviving is not laziness. Not being busy every moment. I'm not booked and busy. I have things on my calendar that need to get accomplished, but there are some open spaces. Do I need to be grinding to have a purposeful life? Dr. Francine Totter shares her story, saying that when she retired, the very idea of doing nothing was terrifying and intolerable, a situation to be avoided at all cost. However, in time, she found that taking time every day to do absolutely nothing or close to it was good for her well-being. She learned that doing nothing is an art form. It's a practice that has proven mental and physical health benefits. It can lower blood pressure, relax skeletal muscles, and sharpen focus, all without requiring money for special products and services. Maybe it's time for me to stop and think about what being constantly busy actually accomplishes. Are people inherently happier over time because they have a booked schedule? 
Or is it the little moments like taking time to look at nature and spending time with loved ones that provide joy? Today, there is a glorification of staying busy. Productivity is king. However, rethinking what productivity means can be a game changer. Your productivity does not define your worth. You are valuable because you are you. There is no one like you in the universe. If you relate to one of these things we've mentioned here or know someone that does, please like and share it with your friend. Speaking of laziness, did you know there's actually a lot of overlap between laziness and burnout that can make it difficult to differentiate between the two? If you're interested in knowing more, be sure to check out our video, Six Signs You're Burnt Out, Not Lazy. Are you looking for a cuddly companion that brings positivity and mental wellness to your daily life? Get your very own sigh. The lovable plushie is here to brighten your days. It embodies the spirit of Psych2Go and it serves as a reminder to prioritize your mental well-being. Its green leaf symbolizes growth, renewal, and the importance of self-care, whether it's for yourself or as a thoughtful gift for a loved one. Sai is ready to be your snuggly friend through all of life's ups and downs. Buy your Sai plushie today. Link is listed in the description box.